Hello, my lovelies. It is time for another book haul, so stay tuned. So this is actually two months of book hauls that I'm combining into one, but uh, there are 36 books here. So grab you a snack, grab you something to drink, get settled in. We're going to be here for a minute. So I have books from subscription boxes. I think this whole side over here is from, we've got book of the month and the bookish box and unplugged book box. And then on this side, I have books that were gifted to me, books that I ordered, books that I bought in store, all that. So that's this whole stack over here. So let's get started with these over here. Uh, up top is actually my most recent book of the month book, and that is The Resort by Sarah Ox. And this says, <clears throat> Welcome to paradise. We hope you survive your stay. There are three rules to following during a vacation at the famous Kosang Resort. One, leave the past behind. When Cass sets foot on the coast of Thailand's world-famous party island, she's searching for an escape. With dark secrets following her every move, Koh Sang becomes the perfect place to hide. Two, always be careful who you trust. Now, years later, Cass is a local dive instructor alongside the Permanents, a group of expats who have claimed the island as their own. The Permanents don't linger on who they were before the island, simply because, like Cass, they all have something to outrun. Three, if someone discovers who you are or who you really are, run. But suddenly a dive student is found dead and paradise comes crashing down because this isn't the first mysterious death on the island and it won't be the last. Someone who knows who Cass is and they're ready to make sure justice is finally served. Next are the books that I got last month from Book of the Month. I actually got three of them. First one is First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. And this says... Evie Porter has everything a nice Southern girl could want. A doting boyfriend, a house with a white picket fence, a tight group of friends. The only catch, Evie Porter doesn't exist. The identity comes first, Evie Porter. Once she's given a name and a location by her mysterious boss, Mr. Smith, she learns everything there is to know about the town and the people in it. Then the mark, Ryan Sumner. The last piece of the puzzle is the job. Evie isn't privy to Mr. Smith's real identity, but she knows this job isn't like the others. Ryan has gotten under her skin, and she's starting to envision a different sort of life for herself. But Evie can't make any mistakes, especially after what happened last time. Evie Porter must stay one step ahead of her past while making sure there's still a future in her front. The stakes couldn't be higher, but then Evie has always liked a challenge. Next up is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. And this says, this is a tale of murder. Or maybe that's not quite true. At its heart, it's a love story, isn't it? Lana Ferrer is a reclusive ex-movie star and one of the most famous women in the world. Every year, she invites her closest friends to escape the English weather and spend Easter with her on her idyllic private Greek island. I tell you this because you may think you know this story. You probably read about it at the, at the time. It caused a real stir in the tabloids, if you remember. It had all the necessary ingredients for a press sensation. A celebrity, a private island cut off by the wind, and a murder. We found ourselves trapped overnight. Our old friendships concealed hatred and a desire for revenge. What followed was a game of cat and mouse, a battle of wits, full of twists and turns, building to an unforgettable climax. The night ended in violence and death. But who am I? My name is Elliot Chase, and I'm going to tell you a story unlike any you've ever heard. And this definitely gives me, um, and then there were nine vibes by Agatha Christie. So I'm really curious how I would feel about that one. All right, next up we have Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. This says, Fast-paced, hilarious, and ultimately hopeful novel for anyone who has ever worried they might be a terrible person. From the best-selling author of Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. Enid is obsessed with space. She can tell you all about black holes and their ability to spaghettify you without batting an eye in fear. Her one major phobia, bald men. But she tries to keep that one under wraps. When she's not listening to her favorite true crime podcast on a loop, she's going out with a rotation of women from dating apps. 
At the same time, she's trying to forge a new relationship with her estranged half-sisters after the death of her absent father. When she unwittingly plunges into her first serious romantic entanglement, Enid starts to believe that someone is following her. As her paranoia spirals out of control, she must contend with her mounting suspicion that something is seriously wrong with her. Because at the end of the day, there's only one person she can't outrun. Herself. Brimming with quirky humor, charm, and heart, interesting facts about space effortlessly shows us the power of revealing our secret shames, the most beautifully human parts of us all. Okay, uh, and I can't tell you which of these books were Unplugged Book Box and which of these were the Bookish Box. I know this one here was Unplugged, but I'm not sure about the rest of them. Okay, first off, we have this beautiful one. It's in a box here. This is Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. And does this say it inside or do I have to look it up? Okay, so it's not on the book. So I'll just read it from Goodreads. This says, from Olivia, from Olivia Blake, the New York Times bestselling author of the Atlas Six comes Masters of Death, a story about vampires, ghosts, and death itself. Viola Merrick is a struggling real estate agent and a vampire, but her biggest problem currently is that the house she needs to sell is haunted. The ghost haunting the house has been murdered, and until he can solve the mystery of how he died, he refuses to move on. Fox Demora is a medium, and though he's also most definitely a shameless fraud, he isn't entirely without his uses, seen as he's actually a godsend of death. When Viola seeks out Fox to help her with the ghost-infested mansion, he becomes inextricably involved in a quest that neither he nor Vi expects or wants. But with the help of an unruly poltergeist, a demonic personal trainer, a sharp-voiced angel, a love-stricken reaper, and a few high-functioning creatures, v and, Vi and Fox soon discover the difference between a mysterious lost love and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. That sounds like it's a fun story. Okay, next is this box set. And we have the, the King and Coven series. Oh, looks like my SD card is full. So I'll be right back. Okay, sorry if there was an angle change. All right, so back to this. This is the King and Coven trilogy. Okay, so we have To Hunt a Demon King. And this is by Madeline Elliott. To break a demon curse and to wear a demon crown. These are absolutely stunning and I will have to look up on Goodreads to tell you about these. So To Hunt a Demon King is book one and this says Little Red Riding Hood meets spicy romanticy in this witchy retelling of a classic fairy tale. Y'all know I love me a retelling. Uh, it says, Alara has only one goal in her life, to convince her mother to treat her like the fully grown witch she is and let her attend a coven meeting. But on her 25th birthday, Alara discovers that her mother had good reasons for keeping her away from the coven and her grandmother, its unfeeling crone. Now forced to run for her life to hide a magic she shouldn't possess, Alara is told to find the wicked demon king and claim his protection. But when she runs into a handsome hunter and his wolf in the forest, her journey takes on a dimension she never expected. Tropes include reluctant allies to lovers, only one bed, only one horse, forced proximity, and mistaken identities. All right, next up we have Blood Debts by Terry J. Benton Walker. And this is, oh, it's so dark. 30 years ago, a young woman was murdered. A family was lynched, and New Orleans saw the greatest magical massacre in its history. In the days that followed, a throne was stolen from a queen. On the anniversary of these brutal events, Clement and Christine, Christina Trudeau, the 16-year-old twin heirs to, to the powerful, magical, dethroned family, are mourning their father and caring for their sick mother. Until, by chance, they discover their mother isn't sick, she's cursed cursed by someone on the very magical council their family used to rule. Someone who will come for them next. 
Christina, once a talented and dedicated practitioner of generational magic, has given up magic for good. An ancient spell is what killed their father, and she was the one who cast it. For Clement, magic is his lifeline, a distraction from his anger and pain, even better than the random guys he hooks up with. Christina and Clement used to be each other's most trusted confidant and friend. Now they barely speak. But if they have any hope of discovering who is coming after their family, they'll have to find a way to trust each other and their family's magic, all while solving the decades-old murder that sparked the still rising tensions between the cities, magical and non-magical communities. And if they don't succeed, New Orleans may see another massacre, or worse. With a story that hits as devastatingly as a forest fire, T.J. Clune, and a world that crackles with mystery and ferocity, Marco Shira, Terry J. Benton Walker's Blood Debts is a thrilling and devastating contemporary fantasy about magic, family, and justice served. I'm trying not to drop these books on my head. All right, next up we have Guardians of Dawn Zahara by S.J. Jones. This says... Magic flickers, love flames, chaos reigns. They say that when the world is out of balance, the guardians of dawn are reborn. Jen Zahara's life is already full with appeasing her stepmother's cruel whims, looking after her blind younger sister and keeping her magic secret from those who would kill her for it. But when a mysterious plague starts transforming magicians into monsters, Zahara joins a secret magical liberation society called the Guardians of Dawn, and her life becomes entwined with an easily flustered young man named Han, who has secrets of his own. Magicians go missing, abominations emerge, and Zahara's powers are growing beyond her control. A demon has awoken in the morning realms, and Zahara must find the elemental warrior within before the balance between order and chaos is lost forever. Guardian of Fire, there you are. Filled with adventure, romance, and a delightful cast of characters, Guardians of Dawn, Zahara, is the start of a richly imagined fantasy series that will leave you breathless for more. Next up, we have The Spanish Love Deception by Alina Armas. And this says, A wedding in Spain, the most infuriating man. Three days to convince your family you're actually in love. Catalina Martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially when her little white lie about her American boyfriend has spiraled out of control. Now everyone she knows, including her ex-boyfriend and his fiance, will be there. She only has four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic for her and aid in her deception. NYC to Spain is no short flight and her family won't be easy to fool. But even then, when Aaron Blackford, the 6'4", blue-eyed, pain in the arse, offers to step in, She's not tempted even for a second. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood-boiling, and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate, and the wedding, and as the wedding gets closer, the more desirable an option Aaron Blackford becomes. The Spanish Love Deception is an enemies to lovers fake dating romance perfect for those looking for a steamy slow burn with the promise of a sweet, happy ever after. Alrighty. Next up we have a Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. And this says, Lady Gemma Ashbourne seemingly has it all. She's young, gorgeous, and rich. Her family was anointed by the gods, blessed with incredible abilities. But underneath her glittering facade, Gemma is deeply sad. Years ago, her sister Mara was taken to the Middle Mist to guard against treacherous magic. Her mother abandoned the family. Her father and eldest sister, Farron, Embroiled in a deadly blood feud with a mysterious Basque family, often forget Gemma exists. Worst of all, Gemma is the only Ashborn to possess no magic. Instead, her father fights her body fights it like a poison. Constantly ill, aching with loneliness, Gemma craves love and yearns to belong. Then she meets the devastatingly handsome Talon Diaster. His family destroyed themselves, seduced by a demon, and Talon. The only survivor is determined to redeem their honor. Intrigued and enchanted, Gemma proposes a bargain. She'll help Talon navigate high society if he helps her destroy the Basques. According to a popular legend, a demon called the Man with the Three-Eyed Crown is behind the family's blood feud. Slay the demon in the feud. But attacks on the Middle Mist are increasing. The plot against the Basques quickly spirals out of control, and something immense and terrifying is awaking in Gemma drawing her inexplorably toward Talon and an all-consuming passion that could destroy her. 
or show her the true strength of her power at last. All right, next up is Guardian of the Cursed by Katie Rose Rosepool. And this says, Since fleeing the gilded halls of Evergarden for the muck-filled canals of the marshes, Marla Briggs has made a name for herself as the best curse breaker in Caraza City. But no matter how many cases she solves, she's still haunted by the mystery of her mother's disappearance. When Adria's fall crest, Marlo's old crush and scion of one of Caraz's most affluent spellmaking families, asks her to help break a life-threatening curse, Marlo wants nothing to do with the boy who spurned her a year ago. But a new lead in her mother's case makes Marlo realize that the only way to get the answers she desperately seeks is to help Adria's and return to Evergarden society. Even if it means suffering through a fake love affair with him to avoid drawing suspicion from the conniving five families. As the investigation draws Marlo into a web of deadly secrets and powerful enemies, a shocking truth emerges. Adrius's curse and her mother's disappearance may just be clues to an even larger mystery, one that could unravel the very foundations of Caraza and magic itself. Okay, I'm actually going to have to stop here for a minute, but um, I'll come back and finish this shortly. For you, it'll be like a second. <laughs> Okay, I am back. Uh, for you, it's been just a second. For me, it's actually been a couple of hours. All right, next up we have Bonesmith by Nikki Palpetro. And this says, Ready your blade, defeat the undead. In the Dominions, the dead linger, violent and unpredictable, unless a Bonesmith severs the ghost from their earthly remains. For Bonesmith Wren, becoming a Valkyr... A ghost fighting warrior is a chance to solidify her place in the noble house of bone and impress her frequently absent father but when sabotage causes Ren to fail her qualifying trial she is banished to the border wall the last line of defense against a wasteland called the breach where the vicious dead roam unchecked determined to reclaim her family's respect Ren gets her chance when a house of gold prince is kidnapped and taken beyond the wall to prove she has what it takes to be a valkyr Ren vows to cross the breach and rescue the prince, but to do so, she's forced into an uneasy alliance with one of the kidnappers, a fierce ironsmith called Julian from the exiled House of Iron, and the very people who caused the breach in the first place, and the House of Bones' sworn enemy. As they travel, Ren and Julian spend as much time fighting each other as they do the undead, but when they discover there's more behind the kidnapping than either of them knew, They'll need to work together to combat the real danger, a dark alliance that is brewing between the living and the undead. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, next is Court of the Undying Seasons by A.M. Strickland. And let's see. This one says, When 19-year-old Finn volunteers to take her secret love's place in their village's finding, she's terrified. Those who are chosen at the finding are whisked away to Castle Court's Heart, a vampire school where human students either succeed and become vampires, fail and spend the rest of their lives as human thralls, or they don't survive long enough to become either. Finn is determined to forge a different path, learn how to kill the undead and get revenge for her mother, who was taken by the vampires years ago. But Court's Heart is as captivating as it is deadly, and Finn is quickly swept up in her new world and its inhabitants, particularly Gavrin, her handsome and hostile vampire maker, whose blood is nothing short of intoxicating. As Finn begins to discover new aspects of her own identity and, rest and test her newfound powers, she stumbles across a string of murders that may be connected to a larger ritual, one with potentially lethal consequences for vampires and humans alike. Finn must uncover the truth and find the killer before she use, loses her life or betrays her own heart. Okay, next up is Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Arbentrout. And this says, She lives by her intuition. He feeds on her pleasure. Long ago, the world was destroyed by gods. Only nine cities were spared. Separated by vast wildernesses, Teeming with monsters and unimaginable dangers, each city is now ruled by a guardian, royalty who feed on mortal pleasure. Born with an intuition that never fails, Callista knows her talents are of great value to the power-hungry of the world. So she lives hidden as a courtesan 
of the Baron of Archwood. In exchange for his protection, she grants him information. When her intuition leads her to save a traveling prince in dire trouble, the voice inside her blazes with warning and promise. Today he'll bring her joy. One day he'll be her doom. When the Baron takes an interest in the traveling prince and the prince takes an interest in Callista, she becomes the prince's temporary companion. But the city simmers with re rebellion, and with knights and monsters at her city gates and a hungry prince in her bed, intuition may not be enough to keep her safe. Callista must choose, follow her intuition to safety, or follow her heart to her downfall. Next is Bewitching a Highlander by Roma Corden. And this says, Define all for the love of a bewitching lass. Brianna McRae, a healer from Sky with a touch of witchery in her blood, embarks on a dangerous search for her missing father. She arrives on the Isle of Coal, seat with the vile Campbells, seat of the vile Campbells. There she encounters the debonair future chief of the Dunbar clan, Egan. Egan Dunbar is on coal to keep the peace between the feuding Campbells and Dunbars. But when he catches Brianna in a lie, he agrees to help her find her father to pay back an old debt and get to the bottom of the secret she's hiding. Is Egan willing to betray his clan for love? Can Brianna trust him with her family's secret and put those she loves at risk? Next is Face the Night by Lainey Forbes. And this says, On a harsh frontier where good and evil contend for people's minds, a young woman must fight for her true identity in this scintillating YA fantasy from the author of the award-winning Age of the Seventh Son trilogy. Once Katarina McGregor led a charmed life. Daughter of a wealthy rancher, pretty and educated, she looked forward to all the world had to offer until fate took a turn. Now family, home, and even her name have been stripped away. As Black Cat Whitfield, adopted daughter of an outlaw, she's wanted by the authorities. It certainly wasn't the destiny she imagined, especially as one of the blessed. The blessed, rare people like Cat, are supposed to use their gifts to carry out missions for the patron saints. But she can only imagine that St. Prudentia made a terrible mistake in choosing her. Still, her skill has never deserted her. Whenever danger threatens, Cat receives a vision, just in time to save her life. And when she meets a renegade priest, Father Ignatus, Ignatus, he helps her understand how her ability may be part of a much bigger picture, a picture that involves facing up to the monstrous Baron Caldwell, the one who ordered her parents killed, and his son, Adrian, who betrayed them all. Cat is torn between guilt over her parents' deaths, a longing for vengeance against their killers, and a dismaying new interest in Adrian. It would be easiest to flee the whole situation and never look back, but as someone once told her, you can't outrun the darkness on your heels. There's only one way to break through to sunrise, by turning to face the night. Next is A Hundred Vicious Turns by Lee Page O'Brien. And this says, A non-binary heir to an arcane bloodline. An ambitious rival caught in a cruel bargain, a ruthless magical adversary with plans for them both. Rat Evans, heir to one of the oldest magical bloodlines in New York, doesn't cast spells anymore. For as long as Rat can remember, they've been surrounded by doorways no one else sees and corridors that aren't on any map. Then one day, they're they opened a passage and found a broken tower in a field of weeds, and something followed them back. When Rat is accepted into Bellamy Arts, all they want is a place to hide and to make sure they never open another passageway again. But when the only other person who knows what really happened last year, Harker Blakely, the dangerously gifted trans boy who used to be Rat's closest friend, turns up on campus, Rat begins to realize that Bellamy Arts might not be as safe as they, they'd thought, and the tower might not be through with them yet. Soon, Rat finds himself caught in the web of secrets and long-buried magic with their friend-turned-enemy at their throat. But the closer they'd come to uncovering the truth about the tower, the further they're drawn toward the unsettling powers that threaten to swallow them whole. Okay, next up, and I'm pretty sure this one was part of one of the Unplugged book boxes. This is a bind-up of an entire trilogy. It's the Complete Unmarked series by Miranda Lynn. 
and it is thick and beautiful. Uh, so the first book is called The Unmarked Witch. And I have pulled this up on Goodreads so I could tell you about it. This says, All Raven wants is peace. But in a magical realm plagued by deception, the only thing her world knows is turmoil. A land where witches wear their spells like tattoos is no place for a woman without a single magical mark. Except for Raven, whose unblemished skin contradicts the truth of her power. Surviving under the scowls of her fellow witches has carved indelible scars into her mind over the years. Just as the day she watched the Dark King's men murder her grandmother in cold blood. But the Dark King's reign of terror is far-reaching, and Raven's grandmother won't be the last witch to die under his rule. After the death of a coven leader heralds the start of, an infamous, of the infamous witch trials, Raven finds herself dodging death to triumph. The journey quickly descends into perils far greater than she'd ever imagined, including a war on her heart from a man she'd only ever known as a villain. Still, trust is always fragile in kingdoms ruled by magic, especially when love enters the fold. Yet something else is awry in the land of spells and shadows, and Raven must decide whether she trusts her gut or her heart. The Unmarked Witch is the first gripping book in the seductive and intriguing... Well, it says duology here, but it's actually... There's three books. Uh, unmarked. So, yeah. I'm very excited to try this out. Okay. I'm going to set this one down there. And... We're going to move on to this side. So this first book here was actually given to me by the author. And this was on, um, well, actually some of these books were books that I purchased on a cruise that happened a while ago, like a while ago. It was a Canadian cruise and uh, it just kind of stayed in the back, like the suitcase and I'd forgotten all about it um, wow. until I was unpacking my suitcase to repack it. <laughs> Anyway, so this was given to me by the author, and that is yeah. The Girl He Left Behind by Beatrice McNeil. And this says, Graham held Willow's hand before he left the church, struggling with the last few words he spoke to her. I will always love you, he said. Then he was gone. Fifteen years ago, Willow Alexander was jilted at the altar by her high school sweetheart, Graham Curry, who left their wedding rehearsal knowing he would not be returning to the church the next day. Confused and distressed by the betrayal, Willow remains in the small town of Glenmore in Cape Britain, nursing her heartache. No one except Willow knows she lost more than her wedding on that devastating day. Soon after her 40th birthday, Willow finds out that Graham is returning to town, without his new wife. As Willow grapples with her emotions at this news, tragedy strikes again. The town's doctor and his wife are found dead. Willow was the last person to see the couple alive and worries that she may have accidentally had a hand in their deaths. Anxious about Graham's return and her imminent arrest, Willow realizes that confronting her fears and revealing a painful secret from her past is the only way for her to truly move forward. Okay, uh, these next three are books that I bought uh, while we were on that trip, and I think I got them all from Waterstones, if I'm correct. So the first one is One for My Enemy by Olivia Blake. And it has these beautiful edges. This says, In New York City, two rival witch families fight for the upper hand. The Antonova sisters are beautiful, cunning, and ruthless, and their mother, known only as Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, is an elusive supplier of premium intoxicants. Their adversaries, the influential... Federov brothers serve their crime boss father, named Koshe, Koshi the Deathless. His enterprise dominates the shadows of magical Manhattan. For 12 years, the families have maintained a fraught stalemate. Then everything is thrown into disarray. Black, bad blood carries them to the brink of disaster, even as fate draws together a brother and a sister from either side. Yet the siblings still struggle for power and, in and internal conflicts could destroy each family from within. That is, if the enmity between empires doesn't destroy both sides first. And sorry for the barking. Um, <laughs> the dogs are downstairs watching doggy TV right now. And I think they're barking at the TV. <laughs> okay, next up we have 
the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. Let's see. This says, Ever has lived his whole life trapped within a vast library, older than empires and larger than cities. Lavira has spent hers in a tiny settlement out of the out on the dust, where no one goes and nightmares stalk. The world has never noticed them. That's about to change. And on the back it says. All books, no matter their binding, will fall to dust. The stories they carry may last longer. They might outlive the paper, the library, even the language in which they were first written. The greatest story can reach the stars. All right, and the last of those is The Sun and the Void by Gabrielle Romero La Cruz. And it has these pretty purple edges. This one says, Rihanna is desperate. Stuck on the edges of society, Rihanna's only hope lies in an invitation from a grandmother she's never met. But the journey to her is dangerous and prayer can always avert disaster. Attacked by creatures that stalk the mountains, Rihanna is on the verge of death until her grandmother, a dark sorceress, intervenes. Now dependent on the Donna's magic for her life, Rihanna will do anything to earn and keep her favor. Even the bidding of an ancient god who whispers to her at night. Eva Casare is unwanted. Illegitimate and of mixed heritage, Eva is her family's shame. She tries to be the perfect daughter, but Eva is hiding a secret. Magic calls to her. Eva knows she should fight the temptation. Magic is the sign of the dark god, and using it is punishable by death. Yet it's hard to ignore power when it's always been denied you. Eva is walking a dangerous path, one that gets stranger every day. And in the end, she'll become something she never imagined. Okay, uh, let's see. These are both books that I pre-ordered from Amazon. So the first one here is Sanctuary of the Shadow by Aurora Asher. And it has these cool edges. This says... Enter at your own risk and discover the greatest show unearthed in this explosive, darkly imaginative debut fantasy. For humans, the circus is a place filled with wonder and amazement. For Harrow, though, it's a place to hide from those who slaughtered her entire clan. Disguising her abilities as part of her act has kept her true identity safe for years. Until he arrives. A strange new attraction with no name... No memory of who or even what he is, let alone an explanation for his odd yet deadly powers. But beneath the layers of anger and isolation, one glimpse into his inky eyes reveals a soul that calls out to the loneliness in her own. And so she chooses him. Harrow is drawn to the darkness, to her insatiable need to soothe the beast who threatens their very existence. But with every secret she unlocks from his past, another from hers whispers free as well, luring enemies who will stop at nothing to get their final revenge on Harrow. And she's afraid she's given them the perfect weapon against her because he's not what he seems, and maybe it's time they finally learn neither is she. Okay, I have to go and turn that off, and I'm also going to change my battery while I'm at it. Marty's trying to sleep, and I think he's going to wring this dog's neck if he doesn't stop. <laughs> Sorry if the angle changed. That very, very quickly got way out of hand. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Next up, I have Gothica, A Tale of Dark Romance by Ronix. This has pretty purple, like dark purple sprayed edges. This is an unusual girl, an enigmatic man, an ancient castle. What could go wrong? An outcast her entire life, Kravina Klim is left adrift after losing her mother. When she receives the admission letter from the mysterious University of Varenmore, she accepts it as a sign from the universe. The last thing she expects, though, is an old secluded castle at the top of a mountain riddled with secrets, deceit, and death. Vad Deverell is an enigma and enjoys being a closed book, but knows exactly everything that happens in the university. As a part-time professor working on his thesis, Vad has been around long enough to know the dangers the castle possesses, and he knows the moment his path crosses with Corvina that she's dangerous to everything that he is. They shouldn't have caught each other's eye. They cannot be. But a chill-inducing century-old mystery forces them to collide. People have disappeared every five years for more than a hundred years. 
Corvina is getting clues to unraveling it all, and Thad needs to keep her eye on her needs to keep an eye on her. And so begins a tale of the mysterious, the morbid, the macabre, and a deep love that blossoms in the unlikeliest of places. These next like six, I think, are all books that I pre-ordered from Barnes and Noble. So the first one is If Only I Had Told Her by Laura Nowlin. And this says if only I had told her that I loved her years ago, then I wouldn't be here now. Finn has always loved Autumn. She's not just the girl next door or his mother's best friend's daughter. She is his everything. But she's not his girlfriend. That's Sylvie, and Finn would never hurt her. So there's no way Autumn could know how he truly feels. Jack, Finn's best friend, isn't so sure. He's seen Finn and Autumn together. How could she not know? And how is he supposed to support and protect Finn when heartache seems inevitable? Autumn surrounds herself with books and wants to write her own destiny. But one doesn't always get a new chapter and fate can be cruel to those in love. Told through three different perspectives, If Only I Had Told Her is a love story brimming with truth, tragedy, and the unexpected bonds that heal us. Next up is Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is sort of like the prequel to Legends and Lattes. And it's kind of like how she found herself to be in the position where she wanted to open this coffee shop and all of that. Uh, this says, Viv is a young battle-hungry orc, but her career with the notorious mercenary company Rackham's Ravens isn't going as planned. Wounded during the hunt for a powerful necromancer, she's packed off against her will to recuperate in the sleepy beach town of Merck, so far from the action that she worries she'll never be able to return to it. What's a thwarted soldier of fortune to do? Spending her hours at a beleaguered bookshop in the company of its foul-mouthed proprietor is the last thing Viv would have predicted, but it may be both exactly what she needs and the seed of change she couldn't possibly imagine. Still, adventure isn't all that far away. A suspicious traveler in gray, a gnome with a chip on her shoulder, a summer fling, and an improbable number of skeletons prove Merck to be more eventful than Viv could have ever expected. Next up is Laura Olympus Volume 5 by Rachel Smythe. This is a graphic novel, Hades and Persephone retelling. This is me opening it up for the first time. The art is amazing and I absolutely just love this series. Okay next up is Percy Jackson and the Olympians The Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan. Uh, I don't know if I can really tell you too much about this. Well I guess this is like Percy's now like you know a little more grown up. He's in his senior year of high school and uh, getting ready to go to New Rome University, but he has to fulfill three quests in order to earn, to earn the necessary three letters of recommendation from Mount Olympus. So that's all I can really tell you about this one. All right, next up is The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. And this says, Two hotel receptionists and arch rivals find a collection of old wedding rings and compete to return them to their owners, discovering their own love story along the way. It's the busiest season of the year, and Forest Manor Hotel is quite literally falling apart. So when Izzy and Lucas are given the same shift on the hotel's front desk, they have no choice but to put their differences aside and see it through. The hotel won't stay afloat beyond the holiday season without some sort of miracle. But when Izzy returns a guest's lost wedding ring, the reward convinces management that this may be the way to fix everything. With four rings still sitting in the lost and found, the race is on for Izzy and Lucas to save their beloved hotel and their jobs. As this bitter, ri bitter rivalry turns into something much more complicated, Izzy and Lucas begin to wonder if there's more at stake here than the hotel's future. Can the two of them make it through the season with their hearts intact? And next is The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. And this says, A new door opens. Once there were four, four worlds nestled like pages in a book, each pulsing with fantastical power and connected by a single city, London. 
After a desperate, desperate attempt to prevent corruption and ruin in the four Londons, there are only three. Grey London, thriving but barely able to remember its magical heritage. Red London, ruled lately by the Maresh family, flourishing and powerful. And White London, left, brutally, left to brutality and decay. Now the worlds are going to collide anew, brought to a dangerous precipice by the discoveries of three remarkable magicians. There's Kasika, the child queen of White London, who has nourished her city on blood and dreams, and whose growing devotion to both is leading her down a dangerous path. Then there's Delilah Bard, born a thief in Grey London, who crossed the worlds to become a legend far from there. She's an infamous magician, a devious heroine, and a risk-taking rogue, all rolled into one unforgettable package. Having disappeared to seek a new adventure, an old favor now calls Lila back to a dangerous port to join some old friends who need more help than they even realize. Last, there's Tess, a young runaway with an unusual and powerful ability, hiding out in Red London while trying to stay out of the limelight. Tess is the only one who can keep all the worlds from unraveling, if she manages to stay alive first. From number one New York Times bestselling author V.E. Schwab comes a new adventure set in a beloved world where old friends and foes alike are faced with, da with a dangerous new threat. So this is set in the world of Darker Shades of Magic. And um, I didn't even really realize that, I don't think. Maybe I did and I forgot. <laughs> but I pretty much will get anything that she writes. <laughs> okay, these next four are books that I actually bought in store at Barnes & Noble when I was going to like get price adjusts because like these came with the wrong prices uh, so yeah I while I was there I shopped for some more books so the first one I have here is The Locked Door by Frida McFadden and this says some doors are locked for a reason while 11 year old Nora Davis was up in her bedroom doing homework she had no idea her father was killing women in the basement until the day police arrived at their front door Decades later, Nora's father is spending his life behind bars, and Nora is a successful surgeon with a quiet, solitary existence. Nobody knows about her past, and she'll do anything to keep it that way. Then one of her young female patients is murdered, killed in the same unique and horrific manner that her father used to kill his victims. Somebody knows who Nora is. Somebody wants her to take the fall for this unthinkable crime. But she's not like her father. The police can't pin anything on her, as long as they don't look in her basement. From New York Times bestselling author Frida McFadden comes a riveting psychological thriller about guilt, secrets, and whether it's possible to outrun what's in our blood. Okay, next up is The Housemaid Secret by Frida McFadden. And this is the sequel to The Housemaid, which I have pulled up here on Goodreads, which says, Welcome to the family. Nina Winchester says as I shake her elegant manicured hand, I smile politely gazing down the marbled hallway. Working here is my last chance to start fresh. I can pretend to be whoever I like, but I'll soon learn that the Winchester secrets are far more dangerous than my own. Every day, I clean the Winchester's beautiful house top to bottom. I collect their daughter from school, and I cook a delicious meal for the whole family before heading up to eat alone in my tiny room on the top floor. I try to ignore how Nina makes a mess just to watch me clean it up, how she tells strange lies about her own daughter, and how her husband Andrew seems to be more broken every day. But as I look into Andrew's handsome brown eyes, so full of pain, it's hard not to imagine what it would be like to live Nina's life. The walk-in closet, the fancy car, the perfect husband. I only try on one of Nina's pristine white dresses once, just to see what it's like. But she soon finds out, and by the time I realize my attic bedroom door only locks from the outside, it's far too late. But I reassure myself, the Winchesters don't know who I really am. They don't know what I'm capable of. An unbelievable twisty read that will have you glued to the pages late into the night. Anyone who loves the woman in the window, the wife between us, and the girl on the train won't be able to put this down. Next up is The Teacher by Frida McFadden. This one says... Lesson number one, trust no one. Eva has had a good life. She gets up each day, gets a kiss from her husband, and heads off to teach math at the local high school. All is as it should be, except last year, Kaysom High was rocked by a scandal with one student, Addie, at its center. And this year, Eve is dismayed to find the girl in her class. Addie can't be trusted. She lies. She hurts people. She destroys lives. 
At least, that's what everyone says. But nobody knows the real Addie. Nobody knows the secrets that could destroy her if people at the school found out. And when Eve discovers the shocking truth, Addie will do anything to keep her quiet. From New York Times bestselling author Frieda McFadden comes the story of twisting secrets and long-awaited revenge. And then, last but certainly not least, is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Very excited for this one. This says... A vampire bride and an alpha werewolf form a dangerous alliance in this enthralling new paranormal romance. Misery Lark, daughter of a powerful vampire councilman, is an outcast. Her days of living anonymously among the humans are over. She's been called upon to uphold an alliance between the vampires and the mortal enemies, the wares. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable and their alpha, Low Moreland, is no exception. He rules his pack with absolute authority, but not without justice or feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every movement that he doesn't trust her, if only he knew how right he was. Misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience, reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances, and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about. And she is willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers. And this is very different from Allie Hazelwood's past like stem romance book so i'm very intrigued by this okay so that's everything in this haul have you guys read any of these did you like them did you not comment down below and let me know well i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this click that subscribe button down below and until next time remember to always be completely you bye